Welcome to the video. In this video, we're going to be taking a look at this thing here. Now, we did a review of a tablet PC a little while ago, and that's been very popular. And the reason we got that tablet PC was because I was interested in having something that would go on a ground station. And although I originally got it for that, um, that one dual boots into Android and into Windows as well, it's ended up being used for all kinds of things. So we use it very regularly to change settings on flight controllers, but it's also very handy booting into Android as part of the ground station for using things like the Bluetooth telemetry radios that we've looked at in other videos too. Now, the very first idea that I had was this one here. So we're gonna take a look at this. This is a slightly different way of getting a PC to the field to use in the hobby. Now, this is a VenSmile. Uh, machine. Just get a couple of specs on the back here. It's a little Atom Cherry processor, so it's an Intel processor, 2 gig of RAM, 32 gigs worth of storage, and Wi Fi as well. Uh, this thing came from Banggood.com, so I need to say a very big thank you to those guys. About 90 quid, uh, but if I open the box, you'll see what we're talking about here. It's um, really small. Now it doesn't have a screen, it doesn't have a keyboard, but my thinking was this could be useful for those of us that already have lots of stuff at the field already that has HDMI ins. So I'm thinking of stuff like the uh, Black Pearl screen, for example, has a HDMI port at the side. So could we use something like this in the field as part of a ground station to do configuration or tracking or other things as well? The other thing I'm thinking about here is could we run something like a simulator on this? Now, a lot of the goggles that we're starting to look at now are starting to get HDMI inputs. So if we connected the HDMI input to the goggles, could we run something like Freerider and have a little FPV setup without having it connected to a big tablet or something else? Now, if we look at the connections on the back, uh, we have a USB 3, a USB 2, we have kind of the USB power in, and we'll look at the other cables in the box in a second, the HDMI out, full HDMI slot, a little SD card, and a little jack for headphones as well. And that's pretty much it, apart from a power button at the front, so it's pretty standard stuff. Now, if we look at what else comes in the box here, uh, there isn't a lot. Um, there's... Uh, an adapter. Uh, now this thing's running at 5 volts 3 amps so we could potentially just cut the end off this and stick it onto something like a 3 amp battery eliminator circuit running at 5 volts. That is a way to power it in the field and that's something we might look at in a later video. Um, I've actually got another power supply that we're going to run it from. This one, as you can see, unfortunately isn't one for the UK. So you could use it, but you have to use an adapter. Um, as an electrician, I'm not a massive fan of doing things like that, but it does mean that we can power it from a LiPo battery, which is going to be good for playing at the field. The other thing that comes in it uh, is a HDMI cable, which is great because it's going to allow me to connect it to something like the FlySight Black Pearl goggles so we can have a look. Apart from that, you get a really Calling it a manual is, is uh, rather grand. Uh, it just tells you kind of the basics, uh, how Windows 10 works and those kind of things as well. So what I thought we'd do in this video is let's actually fire this thing up, connect it to the Black Pearl screen, see how it works. We'll put a couple of things on here like Clean Flight. We'll put things like Libre Pilot on here too. Let's make sure that we can talk to boards and configure stuff. And also then we'll have a go at trying to connect it to something like the Tyrannus radio and we'll see whether or not we can get something like FPV simulator sorted out and we'll see if we can plug it into the goggles and see if that works too. See whether the graphics capabilities in here will support something like that. Not sure because there's going to be compromises to get it into this size but we'll give it a try. So let me clear the decks and we'll come back and we'll have a look at it set up and we'll power it up for the first time and see what happens. So we're about to turn this on for the first time. What I've got here is one of these kind of all-in-one keyboard and mouse pad things. Um, I've used these before with laptops that have been plugged into uh, large TVs that have HDMI inputs. It allows you to kind of sit on the sofa and type. So I've got one of these. So that's what the dongle is in the back of the machine. HDMI is connected in the side of the Black Pearl. So hopefully that'll show us what's going on. 
and the power hasn't been plugged in. So this is genuinely the first time we're going to fire this thing up. Let's see what it looks like. So let me just turn on the black pill first of all. And once that's powered up, let's stick it into HDMI mode. Okay, there's HDMI in. Fantastic. Right, let's turn it on for the first time. Let's plug that little power supply in the back. Ah, we have a little white light at the front that came on briefly. And let's press the power button. Ooh. So we have the Intel logo and we have the little turny twisty windows I'm thinking about doing something symbol. So let me just pause the video there and we'll come back when it's finished booting. And here we have the start of the setup. Now the screen, because it isn't full HDMI here, isn't absolutely fantastic, but I can see enough to start answering the questions. There's also the mouse working, which is good. So now I'm just gonna go through and go through the Windows startup. I'm not gonna make you sit through that. Once I've done that, let me put on a couple of applications. We'll come back and have a look at how it's actually working. But this is looking very promising. So the PC is all set up. All I did was answer the basic Windows 10 questions, where you are, who you are, the time zone, and whether or not you wanted to send loads of data back to Microsoft, which I turned off. So there it is set up. We've installed LibrePilot. We have a little CC3D Atom plugged in, and there's LibrePilot working fantastic. So that works. Let me try it with CleanFlight. I'll be right back. And here's Clean Flight running. We have one of the little Skyline 32 boards from Emacs, and uh, that's pretending to be a NASI 32, and that's working fantastically well. So that's that works fine too. Really, really good, two for two. So it looks like this is going to be a PC that potentially we could do these things on. Now, the only thing that we have to be a little bit careful here is that the way the screen is being displayed, um, I'm not getting all of the thing, the actual bit at the bottom where all the icons are, uh, are just out of sight. And I can just see the very top couple of things. Um, so the way it's laid out on a screen like this means that for navigation at the field, it's probably gonna be a little bit trickier. Uh, the resolution of this screen compared with a HDMI output on this isn't matching perfectly. So that's a little bit of a problem because I'm missing like the last five millimeters around the edge that would make this a really nice interface to use. The last thing I'm going to do then is let me see if I can get an FPV simulator on here. We'll plug in the Tyranus and try that, see what the graphics are like. Everything seems to be working so far. The speed of it isn't bad. I probably wouldn't want to run this as a video production suite, but for day-to-day -day stuff, the things that I'm playing with here, it's working fine. So give me a second, we'll come back and we'll try it with an FPV sim. So I've installed Freerider onto this little computer. It's just nestling here, hiding behind my Tyranus. We've set the Tyranus up a few times on things like Freerider. You can watch the video here, but I've just plugged it in and we've done the calibration. So the keyboard's off to the right. I'll just start the desert. Let's just see if this is going to work. Um, it's tricky, this, without the sound. Uh, obviously, there's no speakers in it, so I uh, would probably normally do this with headphones in. But let me just completely embarrass myself. There we go, we're off. Ooh. There we go, and it's flying around, and I've crashed. So, it actually does do Freerider as well. So the great thing with this is that we could plug the Tyranus into the back of this, and the HDMI out into some goggles if we wanted to do FPV pieces with it. Now, there's a couple of things I'll mention about this. Let me just unplug the Tyranus and uh, close Freerider. I did try and run this with the little power supply that actually came with it. I was kind of interested at how good it was. It was fine until I tried the Freerider demo and I've had to swap it out with the one that I purchased. Now I got a much sturdier UK plug based 3 amp 5 volt USB um, power supply with that kind of end on it when the camera catches up and it's working an awful lot better. So I'd recommend if you're gonna get one of these, invest in a better power supply. Um, it is useful and it does allow us to do all the things that we were doing before. However, having now played with this and seeing how it works with things like the seven inch FPV monitor, 
although it was a nice idea, I think a tablet PC for using at the field is far easier because you have a touchscreen interface. This doesn't have a battery, it doesn't have a screen, it doesn't have a keyboard, and the tablet has all those things. However, this is really handy if you want to have something that's maybe attached to a TV in the lounge or you want to have it in the bag with maybe the keyboard so you can set it up and play with things at the field. I'm going to use this moving forward as a little bit of a test bed. I'm quite happy to install things on here that might upset it in terms of drivers, new software, beta things. Uh, this is the box that I'm going to do it on rather than try it on some of my bigger machines. So this is definitely worthwhile having a look at but not necessarily for using in the way that I thought we could. Although it does everything that we're interested in, you could potentially even have this on your desk with a HDMI out, a nice big 20 inch screen and a nice keyboard and mouse and use it like that with a little USB hub. So thanks again to Banggood.com for sending us this to try. Again this is the Ven Smile little PC. It's a Windows box with a couple of USB cables running Windows 10. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists so you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, Subscribe and happy flying.